If you or someone you know has diabetes, you may have built up an excess supply of test strips and lancets. That's where we come in. We'll buy the supplies that you don't need and resell them to those in need to prevent waste. Help us make diabetes management more affordable. Visit us at teststripswithaz.com. All right, we have Andrea Lee back on the show. She returns to action February 8th in Houston, Texas, taking on Lauren Murphy at UFC 247. This is a great matchup at 125 pounds. Andrea, good to see you. How are you? I'm good. Just training hard, you know, staying busy, but uh, feeling good overall. That's what we like to hear. And uh, I saw via your Instagram, you you did a little traveling to MMA Gold, working with the likes of Jim West and Aspen Ladd and others. How did you enjoy yeah. the trip and the, and the work you got? I always enjoy it you know, getting down there and working with Aspen and Jim. So we've been working together for, you know, quite a few years now. So we have a good relationship, a nice little bond. So I'm always able to learn a whole lot from them whenever I go there. That's great. And the last time we saw you compete was at UFC 242 in September. And you took on Joanne Calderwood. It was a fun fight. It was a really close fight. But ultimately, Joanne got the split decision nod in the fight. I know it didn't go your way, but what did you at least take away from that fight in Abu Dhabi? I took away a lot, you know, next time be better prepared. I, f I don't know if maybe the heat got to me or if my conditioning wasn't that great. But, you know, for me, I feel like, you know, maybe I just didn't condition myself good enough. Um, though it was very, very hot there. And I had a lot of other fighters who, you know, have said the same thing that it that they felt it wearing on them. But for this camp, you know, I've, I'm trying to condition myself. I'm going above and beyond to make sure that, you know, I'm not going to lose because my conditioning's not good, you know. Um, and also, you know, I, I got desperate there at the end of the third round and kept going for takedowns that I wouldn't normally do. So, you know, I feel like I learned maybe a, a lesson through that, you know, just try not to get desperate, try to keep your composure, you know. I was going to ask you about the heat part of it because like you said a lot of fighters talked about the heat and it was super hot have you ever fought in conditions like that before where it was that hot while you were fighting i have not that was a first and um you know going in because my adrenaline was going i didn't really feel it so maybe you know i was thinking that it was just my conditioning but then everybody else you know you know, with speaking to them, including my corners, you know, they were, they said that it was so hot. They were like sweating that their, their socks were like dripping and sweat, you know, at, by the time we got back to the, the, the room, you know, um, they, they said it, they, they didn't, they couldn't understand or they were worried about how the fighters felt, you know, but with the adrenaline going, you don't really notice it, but you do feel, you know, you're getting tired and weaker, um, you know, a lot. I mean, I felt myself getting more tired and weaker than I normally would after the first round. I'm like, dang, it's after the first round. And I'm like, already feeling so bad. I'm like, man, I was like, I started to think I didn't condition myself good enough. But, you know, I don't know. Maybe it was the heat. Maybe it was a bit of both. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to prepare for heat like that. I mean, you're preparing for a fight and you prepare like you normally would. You probably expect it to be a little bit hotter, but probably nothing like like you saw in Abu Dhabi. Well, you know, and... and a lot of people, maybe they don't know, but the building was being built still. It was in the process of the roof being put on and they had just turned the AC on like three days before the fight. And they said it was going to take at least a week or a little longer for it to actually condition, like air condition the entire facility because it was so big. Um, so we only got like three days, you know, for the AC to kind of like, you know, cool things down, but it didn't really cool anything down. It still felt like you're walking around outside in the heat in a hot sauna. Did you at least enjoy the the trip out there and the experience out there outside of the fight itself, really? Oh, yeah. I definitely did. You know, we got to go and check out uh, the Presidential Palace. We got to go to Dubai and uh, see a lot of, like, really neat, uh, you know, people. We met a lot of cool, interesting people. And we got to, um, you know, shop for souvenirs. And the only downside was just that it was so hot. You know, it just was so humid and hot. You know, people didn't get their day started until like six o'clock at night. Um, you would be walking around outside in the daytime and it would be like deserted. Like nobody would be out. It was strange. Like we even went to Ferrari World and um, 
there were no lines at all. Like we were the first ones on the rides and we wondered why it was that way. But then we realized it's because people don't come out until the nighttime because it is so hot. That's crazy. I can't, I mean, yeah. I've been to Texas a few times and there's like a difference between like Dallas heat and like Houston heat. I think Dallas <laughs> is more like just hot. While if you go to Houston, it's like super humid. So it's like, no matter where you go, you're going to feel something different either way. And yeah. it feels like Abu Dhabi was just like something that goes I way thought, beyond that. <laughs> I thought I was going to be prepared, you know, because I think humidity, you know, I think our humidity here in Louisiana and I'm like, oh, I'm going to be prepared. I live in humidity. I love humidity. I'm fine with it. And then when I got there, it was like, I mean, you literally <laughs> like walk out of the airport and it really slaps you in the face. I mean, it was so thick. It was ridiculous. It was like nothing I had ever felt before. Well, now you don't have to fight in Abu Dhabi. You get to deal with, uh, you know, less less temperatures here. And you're going to fight Lauren Murphy, who, like yourself a little while ago, she needed a change. She made the change and moved to Houston, got back with her old team over there. And she looked pretty darn good in her last fight against Mara Barella in Newark. Obviously, fighting in Texas is pretty cool since you have roots, like you said, being from Louisiana. What did you think of the matchup when you got it? You know, I was excited about it. I thought it was a great matchup. I know, you know, Lauren Murphy, she's a very tough fighter. She's very competitive and she's, she's strong. She's going to come forward and she's, she's got no quit in her at all. So, I, you know, I was very excited about the matchup. And, um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm originally from Texas, born and raised. So I'm excited about going back to Texas and fighting in front of my the majority of the people that I know are able to go. So it's going to be like I'm fighting in front of my hometown, even though I'm not. I mean, I'm in Houston. My hometown's Atlanta, Texas. You know, but it's still going to be exciting because I'm going to have a lot of uh, hometown friends and fans there and family. So it's going to be exciting. Where's Atlanta, Texas? Atlanta is it's it's in the northeast corner. It's not too far from Texarkana. It's close to Arkansas, Louisiana. It's in the it's called the Arklatex area. So it's like right there on the three states. So how far would a ride from Atlanta, Texas be to get to Houston? From Atlanta to Houston would be about four hours. Oh, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. No. I talked to Jonathan Martinez the other day, who's fighting on this car, just got added to it. He said it's like a nine-hour drive from where he's at. He's near Lubbock. So at least you yeah. don't have to drive. <laughs> yeah, it's four I hours is too bad. I wouldn't want to drive that. I think I'd fly that. Yeah. But um, I have a, a four, about a four-hour drive from Shreveport, too. So, I mean, it's still the same. That's not too bad, considering how big Texas is. But um, I'm curious because... Yeah. I did. I spoke to Lauren last week, and she had told me that before this fight with you was offered, she had agreed to fight Roxanne Mataferi, I believe, on tonight's card at UFC 246. But they called her a couple weeks later, and they said they were going to switch things up, put Macy Barber in that fight, and then they offered you, and, and here we are in a few weeks' time. Were you offered anybody else originally, or was it always Lauren? No, it was just Lauren. So, you know, I didn't I didn't get a, a second offer. Uh, they offered me Lauren, you know, and I was – quick to accept because you know i want to fight and i thought it would be a great matchup lauren's been sort of up and down for most of her ufc run but clearly she's built some confidence with the going back to her old team as she showed in her last fight what did you think of her performance against myra were you impressed with it yeah i was i was very impressed you know and and that finish was incredible uh definitely see a big difference in the her most recent change in in her camp you know i think it maybe it's definitely helping it's big I mean, like you can clearly see there's a big difference. Um, so that's why I think it's going to be a super exciting fight, you know, for the both of us. I was going to say, cause you, I, I know you dug the Calderwood matchup because of her style, the striking first mentality. You've been sort of paired up with a bunch of wrestlers and ground technicians, which you're fine doing, yeah. but you wanted to get in there and, and strike a little bit. And Lauren's sort of known for being pretty scrappy herself. So from a stylistic perspective, this one's got to get you excited. Yeah, she's gonna, she's, she likes to get in there and bang. I think it's going to be exciting. Um, I, you know, again, in my last fight, you know, with Joanne Calderwood, I really would like to, to get that one again because, you know, she is an exciting fighter and I want to be able to strike. And I don't think that I got to utilize that as much in my last fight because I just, you know, I don't know. I just kept on wanting to clinch and I, I just... You know, I kept doing stupid stuff. So in this fight, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to taking advantage of the striking aspect, you know, and I want it to be a fun, exciting fight. I want us to go in there. I want to get my hand raised. I want to get a finish. But, uh, you know, I'll take a decision if that if that's what it comes down to. But I would also love to get 
a you know fight of the night <laughs> <laughs> bonus so i want to go in there and be exciting for everybody I felt like heading into your fight with, with Joanne, and I think I'm guilty of this as well, because I know I asked you about it, but there was a lot of talk about the belt, and if you beat JoJo, there'd be a good chance that you'd fight for the belt next. I'm curious, did, 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 the, did the title talk start to, to mess with your mind a little bit as the fight with Krukosa? Like I know your answer with me was, was very honest, because I appreciated that, because you said, you know, if it comes, it comes, but you weren't really sure if you were ready to handle the responsibility of being a champion with everything going on in your life. And I felt like watching the interviews closer and closer to the fight, I think the subject was approached even more so. Did it start to creep into your mind a little bit more than you hoped it would with all the title chatter I, stuff? I, I like to think about one fight at a time, you know, and, and they weren't really asking questions about Joanne, you know, they kept asking about Valentina. I'm like, I'm not here for Valentina. I'm here for Joanne, you know, and that's kind of like, frustrating because it gets your mind and I, I do my best you know to not let things like disrupt that but I mean at the same time yeah you start thinking ahead you know and, and and that kind of um that kind of thinking you know can mess you up you know because you got to think at, you got to you got to be focused on what, the task at hand you know you can't be thinking ahead because you, you know like I hadn't even gotten through Joanne yet you know so I mean, anything could happen, and you know, look, I ended up losing that fight. So with them coming to me and talking, you know, and asking about Valentina because Valentina was wanting um, the she had mentioned she wanted the winner of that fight, um, you know. So maybe, yeah, I think it did, you know, kind of get in my head a little bit. Maybe, you know, maybe it disrupted some of my focus. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 got to be tough doing those media day things because you're getting all these different interviews, and I feel like a lot of times you're getting asked the same questions over and over again. It's got to be a little frustrating, right? Oh, very, very. Um, you got to ask the same question over and over, but different ways. <laughs> or try right. to answer it in different ways. <laughs> and then you, <laughs> so you don't know why the broken record. <laughs> yeah. Well, the beauty of the fight game is that losses sting, but you always have the opportunity to bounce back and you get that chance on February 8th against Lauren Murphy. And I'm not going to ask you for a prediction or, you know, when you're going to finish the fight or anything like that. But yeah. what are you hoping to show the world in Houston and route to getting your hand raised in a few weeks time? Like as a martial artist, what steps do you want to take on February 8th to, to get better? I'm just wanting to show everybody that, um, that I'm a better fighter than what I was a few years ago and that I was like from last from my last fight and from last year like I want to prove to everybody it's not even that I want to prove to everybody I just want to show the world I'm a better fighter you know and, and through you know everything that's been going on in my life like you know I'm I'm still an incredible fighter and you know nothing's going to change and that I'm moving forward and that I'm, I'm you know I'm not trying not letting any of that hold me back and um you know I just want to continue to get better as we've seen in the past, uh, you and your good friend, Andy Wynn, you like to put out your your yearly calendars for the fans. Yeah. And I know you ladies shot and put together another one for 2020. How much do you enjoy doing these every year? And I guess a better question for the fellas out there, are they still available for those watching right now? Yeah, no, um, they are still available. And, you know, we have like maybe 75 left, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe 60, maybe a little, little less. Um, but I, I enjoy doing them. Andy loves doing them. It is a lot of work, um, you know. And plus, Jake, whenever you're taking those kind of photos. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's just, it's just, it's a lot of work. Um, but it's fun too, I guess. I, I enjoy it, and I do it, you know. For I mean, I, sh the calendar money. I mean, I'm, I'm able to make money off of it, and you know, so it keeps money coming in, and um, you know. It's, you know, I enjoy it. So, yeah. yeah, as long as you're enjoying <laughs> it and you're making money, I think everybody should be happy about that, right? I enjoy making money. <laughs> there you go. We enjoy you guys making as much money as possible. But a uh, couple things before we let you go. UFC 246 going on tonight. And one of the burning questions I, I have is, is Roxanne Mataferi just com getting completely overlooked tonight against Macy Barber? How do you like and see that fight playing out? I feel like Roxy always gets overlooked. You know, she always comes in there as the underdog somehow, but she always ends up coming out on top. Uh, and I think that that's her, maybe that's her strength, you know, coming in as the underdog. And she's, you know, always people take her for granted. You know, they, you know, they overlook her too much. 
But Macy is a very good young up and comer. She's very strong. She's aggressive. And any chance that she gets, she's going to throw some elbows, you know, and try to like split you open, uh, which, you know, I have, I have taken note of, on that. Um, I think it's going to be a fun fight. I think it's going to be exciting to watch. Um, but if Macy gets carried away, I think that Roxanne's going to find a way to capitalize, you know, like she does. And, um, you know, I, I see this fight could go either way. It can go either way. Yeah, but that's I'm a good not one. I'm not counting Roxy out. I never count her out. No one should count her out. My gosh, she's uh, the biggest underdog on the car, which is really surprising. Um Yeah. And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't get your take on McGregor versus Cerrone tonight. And uh, I'm not sure what what's your heart saying and what's your mind saying. Are they the are they saying the same thing? My heart would love to see Cowboy go in and get that win. My mind, you know, says that Connor's going to go in and get the win, you know, but in my heart, you know, I would love to see Cowboy get that finish. I think it's going to be a great, I think it's going to be fun to watch. I'm excited about it. Um, you know, Cowboy's been since, since, well, honestly, like as long as I've known Cowboy and I met him, you know, like a few years back when I went down there to train with him, he was wanting to fight Connor even then, you know, he's, he's been wanting that fight for so long now and he finally has gotten it and so i'm excited to see it i'm excited i'm excited for him <clears throat> yeah i don't think anyone's more deserving of yeah. this opportunity tonight yeah and i'm glad to see connor back you know i'm excited he's so much fun to watch you know i really am i'm excited to see them both in there i agree i am looking forward to this i got goosebumps mm -hmm. just thinking about it tonight and yeah. uh I'm excited for your fight coming up as well against Lauren Murphy, February 8th, UFC 247 in Houston, Texas. Great fight at 125 pounds. Andrea, always appreciate the time, especially on fight day. Before we let you go, let the <laughs> folks know where they can find and follow you on the web, social media, shout outs, where they can get the calendars, etc. Anything else you want to get off your chest, the floor is yours. Okay. Hey guys, um, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Andrea KGB Lee. And, um, you can also still get calendars. You can order them through my Venmo or my PayPal. Just look me up on Instagram, Andrew KGB Lee, you know, and I have all the information there. Um, also, I'd like to thank Victory Beef, Iowa Bison, uh, X Endurance, Thorn, uh, Trifecta, and Punch Gunk, um, Healing Panda, and all of my other sponsors whom I might be leaving out I apologize but thank you guys so much for taking care of me and keeping me fed and keeping my supplements and everything like for this camp i appreciate you guys um and thank you mike heck for having me on today absolutely enjoy the fights tonight all the best to you on february 8th and thank you for dealing with all the chaos going on in my house right now <laughs> Ah, no, you're good. Perfect. You, you have a wonderful day, okay? All right, you, you too. Thank you.